Hey everyone, it's been a hell of a morning trying to get started here. <laughs> I'm a little late. Uh, it's been a crazy morning trying to um, start doing this live stream today. Too many things going on. How are you all today? I see that we have a full house. Gosh, um, let's go through it. Let's. Uh, we've got Helen joining us, Phoenix, Sebastian, Michelle, Giorgio from... Oh, let's get rid of that. Um... Oh, God, that's a tough one for me to say. Uh, she's David, Megana, Martina, Sandy, Nancy is here. Awesome. Pamela's here. Neil, thank you for, I do believe you sent me those pictures. I, I bought uh, the picture that you see on the screen here. Uh, John, good morning from Ohio. Yeah, okay. Yeah, those blue colors. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Sebastian, Michelle, Pamela. All right, awesome. Husky Animations. Moises is here. Moises, most likely when you send me those emails in the morning, I'm, ne <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm never going to answer them because I'm scrambling on Saturday morning. Uh, just, just plan on every Saturday morning there's going to be a live stream. And, and, and if there's not, I'll, I'll, I will let you know. Uh, Ace is here. Aura is here. Dennis, welcome. Um, Malavika. Doug, thanks for joining, Doug. And Shelby from Montreal is here. I wrote down Shelby so I don't uh, forget that and I don't annoy you with that. I hope it's not too cold in Montreal. Um, David is here uh, from, ooh, Toronto, Montreal. We have a rivalry there. Um, <laughs> Aurora is here. Ellie. Okay, Karen. Okay, so what do you see here on the screen? Well, um, quite frankly, I haven't really been doing much drawing outside of like drawing tutorials in class. That's all I basically do is um, draw tutorials. Oh, they add, I have a YouTube up and there's a guy drawing in charcoal. So hopefully I can draw as good as him. Uh, um, yeah, that's all I do is, um, and it's because it's my job and I'm not complaining. But uh, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So yesterday after the four hour Zoom class marathon um, for uh, the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan, New York, I'm doing that in my studio here, I'm like, okay, it's time to eat a really big lunch and then it's time to take a 20 minute power nap. And hey, Frankie J, uh, when I got up, I'm like, okay, I really need to draw something for myself. So I just sat down, played some music, and started drawing the figure that you see here. And um, I have people ask me all the time, uh, where do you get your photo reference? Nine out of 10 times I photograph my own photo reference. But the link to purchase this photo from this gentleman's website uh, is in the show more part of um, right below. So just click on show more. There's a link to the guy's website. Hopefully, hopefully I click save. Uh, if it's not there, because I put it there, hopefully I click save when I was planning out the video. Hey, Sabi, uh, Kai Lott is here. Uh, it's very cold. Okay, it's very cold here today, too. Um, Mangesh is here. Restless Sheep is here. Sorabai. Uh, doing pretty good today. So um, check out the link. If it's not there, if you click on Show More and you do not see the link to go purchase this photo or the photo packs that this uh, gentleman sells on his website, uh, just send, send me a little notice. Hey, Nicole. And uh, I'll put it uh, right after the video, I promise you. Uh, now, I, I put the black paintbrush stroke in Photoshop over the, the model's butt because YouTube hates nudity. And who knows what they're going to do with this. But uh, yeah, so uh, this is on the Strathmore toned gray paper. So to make a long story short, I'm rambling and I need to start drawing because I really don't want to waste your time here on Saturday morning. I really do appreciate you joining me. But I was drawing yesterday after class, after the power nap, after the uh, big lunch. And I'm like, okay, I. it was only like, um, maybe I worked on this for like two hours, an hour and a half, something like that. But I'm going to say two hours because I was listening to a lot of concerts. And I'm like, let me just bring this into the live stream tomorrow and work on it with the white charcoal. So this so far is roughly a two-hour drawing, okay? And now what I'd like to do is just work on it a little bit for you. Let me just make sure that I can see, that you can see me. Yep. Okay. And uh, all right. So materials used, Strathmore toned gray paper. Uh, so far, Colorace pencil. That's it. 
All right. And so what I did, I where did I start this drawing? I, I, I didn't even warm up today. This is I didn't even put a mark down on the paper. These are some of my uh, disgusting gestures from yesterday. So um, so if I'm going to warm up, I'm just going to scribble, scribble, scribble. So I need to get my fingers going. I haven't done a thing today. Um, this is my warm up from yesterday. I'm just going to kind of go over it, get my hand going. Uh, now, if you remember last week, last week we did the live stream. Um, if, I, if I don't see your name and I'm ignoring you right now, I'm not trying to be rude. I just want to get uh, the drawing going so we, you guys can um, yeah, see what I'm going to teach here. Uh, all right. So, yeah, this is what we did last week. And this is more of a rough, rushed version of the white charcoal. And it's a roughed version of the shading. Okay, very, very quick. We did this in like an hour on the live stream last week, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. This is different. Do you see the difference? Um, so this is very different. I'm shading with my pencil in a completely different way. Like over here, short duration drawing, I'm shading up and down. And I'm letting you see my pencil strokes, and I don't really care about that. I'm being really, really scribbly with it. I'm not really paying close attention to my edge. Uh, but instead, um, with this one, I started... Let, let me just... Um, Where's my scrap piece of paper? Oh, seriously? Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm like really frazzled this morning. I've been like rushing around like a lunatic um, to get started here. And I don't have a scrap piece of paper, so let's just draw right on the top. And let me tape this so it doesn't move. Okay, bear with me one second. Okay, so I started here. And uh, this is where I start almost every single time if I'm going to draw a, a, something like this. And so I come on down, I get this angle, I get this in, I get this in, and then I stop. So I'm looking at this negative space over here between her arm and uh, her elbow area and her hip. I understand the photo's really, really dark, and it's, it's actually awesome. You know, what I did was I, I brought it into Photoshop and... Um, I lightened it a lot, so I played with the levels because you can't really even see her feet in that photo that you see there on the screen. And so I'm like, yeah, I really, whether I'm going to draw the feet or not, I want to see what they look like. And uh, yeah, oh, wow, from Russia, very cool. From India, from Sweden, God, gee, Wirt, Wirt went awesome. Morocco is here. Morocco's in the house. <laughs> God, this is nuts. Okay, I'll talk to you, Chris uh, Maycock. Awesome. Welcome to the live stream. I'll talk to you about the white charcoal in a second. So after I started doing, you know, this little section, I started to draw around the butt. And then uh, the most important thing that you want to do next is the center line. Okay, so the center line of the butt, if my dad's watching this, he's probably going to be laughing at me. Uh, I'm going to see him right after the live stream, but he's probably going to watch it this week. Um, so, yeah, he's probably laughing at me talking about the center line of the butt. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm a little giddy here today. So uh, let's um, just so I came on down over here and then immediately you just got to take a leap of faith and start to draw this line as slowly as you possibly can so you can kind of um, start to measure things so the width from here to here the width from here to here so that's how I started and then immediately diving into the line which is very pronounced the line that separates the light from the shadow and you guys know the deal with that so really this is a very great 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 piece for me um, uh, a piece of photo reference to draw from because it has gorgeous light and shade. And every single week over at drawingtutorialsonline.com, when I do the video critiques, there's always quite a few people who upload their drawings and they're struggling with the drawings. And it's because, not because they're not good artists, it's because the, the reference that they use totally sucks. Yes, dad humor. There you go. My, um, we were at the kitchen table last night and people were making fun of me with uh, the dad humor. So that's how I started. Now getting back up here to the um, head and I, I just, I sketched in the head, but remember we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We talked about targets. It took me, here's my first target for the head. Here's my second target for the head. Actually, that's my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So and then the top of her head, I have one, two, three lines. Like I was just, okay, let's figure this out to get that head in proportion to the body. I know it's hard to see in that photo because it's blacked out, but it's still a great photo. That hand looks awesome, but I'm going to choose to leave it out. 
uh, because it's a little distracting. I wanted a little bit more of an elegant pose, and I think that the hand uh, just is a little too busy for me. Uh, and I'm looking at this negative space over here. So uh, what I would do with this is really, really trying to pay attention um, to these lines that separate the light from the dark. You do not want to have these lines straight at all. You want to make every single one of these lines curvy. And the reason for that, and I repeat myself every single week in class, uh, and it's all about there's no such thing as a straight line on the figure. Everything must be curvy. So uh, if you see a straight line on your figure drawing, you've got to get rid of it, okay? Because that is going to make it so uh, it looks stiff. So if you can't see this photo very yet. well. No, you can't. I'm sorry. Um, it's as good as it's going to get right now. I, there's nothing else I can do about that. But again, if you click on the link down below, you can buy the photo pack. They're really, really reasonably priced. I bought like a few hundred photos for a really, really great price. I thought it was totally worth it. Um, and the person who's selling the photo is an, is an artist as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's supporting an artist. So it's, it's really, really a good cause. So you see up top over here at the shoulder how I turned that into an S-curve. Uh, over here with the shoulder, I turned it into a little bit of an S-curve. Now another thing that you want to do when you're working on a drawing like this is you want to make sure that you complicate your edges. Okay, complicate your edges. Do not make your edges too simplistic. Uh, again, it's just trying to get rid of the straight lines. Like that is really um, one of the most important things that you can do. So now I'm just going to work a little bit on the hair um, just to try to get my fingers warmed up. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, even though the hair is really, really hard to see, I'm going to come on in and just put in a dark. Okay, I think we really, really need a dark uh, in here to get. So right now we have a middle tone. And I'm going to come on in and just put in the beginnings of the hair. Okay, so we're leaving that little space around her ear. Uh, we're looking at how the hair is coming around um, her head like this. So we're wrapping around with the lay of the land. Again, I'm just doing this for like a warm-up. I'm not going to shade the whole hair right now. I want to get to the white charcoal because that's what this is all about. Um, today and the hair is really busy actually it's a little confusing uh, so I'm going to just put in a few strands of hair to kind of get it started and what you want to do is um, different uh, textures different line quality so the line that I'm going to do on the edge of her hair is going to be much looser than the line that I'm going to do over here on her back the body pushes out into space the only convex part is the okay Okay, so for me, I'm seeing a convex line right over here that comes into the bottom of her rib cage. Over here, I'm seeing one at a fold of skin, a fold of skin, a fold of skin. Over here, we wrap up. Okay, over here, we're coming in and around the trapezius and uh, not so much on the other side. So there, there's actually quite a few. We have a beautiful convex line. So these convex lines are just these lines that come in and disappear, and when they come in and they disappear, they're round, okay? Uh, Magdalena is here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, okay, so now uh, we have this, and what I would do now is just take my Big Mama brush, okay? So we have this thing, and I just kinda wanna blend just a little bit. I'm using a very light touch, okay? Very light touch. I don't wanna over blend it, um, but I just want to soften the drawing just a little bit before we start to use the white charcoal, okay? So I could, I, I like this when I want to do minimal shading. Uh, blending, I meant to say, not shading. Uh, you could also come on in if you want a soft touch with a fan brush, okay? This is just a really generic brush. It's not some expensive thing. Uh, you can come on in with a couple of um, light, strokes it doesn't it probably doesn't look like it's doing much but what it's doing is it's taking some pencil off of the paper um, and it's not such an aggressive touch okay it's pushing the pencil into the nooks and crannies this paper barely has any texture uh, so you can use that what we have been using during the live streams is this bristol brush 
Okay, so this is called a short filbert, and it's pretty aggressive. I don't want to use this on on this. I I, I think it's um, yeah. Uh, so white charcoal. Okay, you know it is freezing today. So what we want to do is um, I can't. Oh, there's my scrap piece of paper. Let's just kind of um, experiment. So this was uh, from our live stream a couple weeks ago. This scrap piece of paper. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. And let me get another piece of tape. So let's just experiment with the white charcoal before we dive into it. So it would be nice if it was actually on the video monitor mat. So let's move that over. So you can see I was experimenting a little bit with the white charcoal. It's been a while since I've used it. So uh, this is our light charcoal with very light pressure. Okay. So my first type, see how I'm holding the, I could hold the pencil this way or I can hold the pencil this way. If I feel like I need more of a lighter touch, if I'm heavy handed today, the first lines that I can put down are gonna be like that. So that's really light pressure. So that's how I'm gonna start, okay? And then I'm gonna start to press down a little bit harder after the layer. So just think layers, okay? Don't think that you're gonna come on in like we did last week in the live stream, and we're just gonna be like a monster and we're gonna power in, and I, I was breaking the pencil and I was pressing down really hard. This is different. This is extremely different. We don't wanna do this, at least I don't wanna do this, uh, because this is gonna be a drawing that is hours, not minutes. I would say this drawing was like um, an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, this drawing that we're gonna uh, do now, uh, it's gonna, I'm gonna work on it all week. Okay, a little bit here, a little bit there. So my first couple of, and, I'm, and this pencil is not sharp. So maybe what I'm gonna do uh, right off the bat is just start to put some really soft line over here near the sacrum. So I, I don't want to go too crazy with it. So my philosophy with the white charcoal, there's a lot of great artists that use the white charcoal. They're really good. And everybody's going to give you their own philosophy. Uh, for me, my philosophy with white charcoal is I do not use it at all in the shadows. I just put it in the light, okay? Uh, Fatma is here. Noor is here. Malika is here. George's portrait art. Samsung, Samsung uh, 23, cool. So I'm, I'm going at this initially uh, with the philosophy that less is best, okay? So just using this in the light, we're trying to think about the form. So I'm going very light. Now I'm holding this like I'm writing a letter. I'm not holding it the other way. I feel okay with that right now. Um, if my hand feels a little stiff, I'll just um, change it. So I'm gonna come on up. And uh, I'm probably gonna blend all of that out in a, in a moment here. So now I'm gonna work a little bit over here and I'm just gonna start putting some white charcoal down on the paper. I am most definitely gonna blend this out in a moment. So I'm using very, very light pressure, very, very light pressure. And I'm gonna come on in over here. So I do believe that's her sacrospinalis muscle. Um, I should have refreshed my anatomy terms before I did this. Um, I, I'm noticing that I haven't been really paying close attention to, uh, I've been drawing and I've been doing a lot of gesture stuff, but in the past I would every month review my anatomy books and I haven't been doing it lately, so I need to do that because anatomy is like a language and if you don't speak it all the time, which means study it, um, you're going to forget. And I know the basics, but the back always trips me up sometimes I forget. Um, yeah. Is it really charcoal? This is charcoal, charcoal white. She is, so far, color race, colored pencil, black, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, you notice that this brush here has dark on it, because I only use this brush with the color race pencil, okay? Now I'm gonna use a different brush that's white, only with the white pencil. Hey, Marie. Um, yeah, so you see how these are different? They're, they're not so dark, like, uh, say, the brushes that I use all the time with the Cola Race. So you could divide your brushes up and just use certain brushes when you're going to be working with the white charcoal. I almost knocked over my uh, water. <laughs> that would not have been good. Okay, hey, Sky. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush, and I'm going to 
just push this into the paper. I want to get rid of some of those strokes, and I'm not bringing this into the shadow. I'm just, this is kind of aggressive actually, but we're just starting to model. So the, the idea and the concept that I'm trying to show you here this morning, I'm, I'm, you see what I'm doing? I'm doing circular strokes. Okay, it's really soft. It's a little contrasty on the video monitor, but it's really super soft here in my studio. So just curvy strokes, circular motion with the brush, a circular motion with the brush. Okay, so that's our first layer. So it's been my experience with artwork, whether it's oil paint and pencil or whatever, if I work in layers, I get better results, okay? SB, good morning. Um, so now, I'm gonna come back in and I'm just gonna hold my pencil this way, okay? So I'm not gonna hold it like I'm writing a letter. Um, I don't know what my problem is with my, um, it's, yeah. I, uh, Michelle Lacanto, I think the white charcoal is actually made from calcium carbonate, the same thing as, okay, Tums antacids. <laughs> If I put over graphite, it gets really dirty. Yeah, you can't put white charcoal on top of graphite. Um, that's really, really a, a bad idea. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start to model a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm barely, barely pressing down on this pencil right now. So I'm going really soft with it. Let's go into her neck. Okay, it's pretty light over there. There's a, a highlight over here on her scapula. Okay, so scapula bone right over here. We're going to put a little bit of a highlight. And uh, this is one of the lightest parts of her back because it's closest to the light. So there's going to be a gradation. So now let's put a little bit over there. So look more at the photo than you look at your drawing. Okay, so now we're going to put a little bit on this sacrospinalis coming on down. Comes from the back of the neck all the way down to the sacrum. Okay, and we're it's just two columns on either side of the spine. So I'm just going in a circular way and really slow. So this is more of a meditative style of drawing compared to what we were doing last week. So you see last week how like crazy this is with pressing down really hard. Uh, so it depends. What, what do you like better? What do you like to do better? Do you like to be fast or do you like to be slow? What kind of equipment are you using? Is, a, is it a document camera? I just am using um, Canon cameras for this. I really, you know, I'm not really a videographer. I've had the same setup for years. So um, there's so many other people on YouTube who are so much better to talk about camera stuff than I am. Um, can we smudge the white charcoal? Yeah, of course, but I'm smudging it with a brush. Okay, so uh, let's let's put a little bit more white charcoal down. Um, so yeah, I would just type in live stream on YouTube and see what the professionals recommend in terms of a camera. Um, I think right now uh, the big hit is 4K and uh, I don't have that 4K equipment right now. So yeah, you definitely don't wanna hear from me what type of cameras I'm using. <laughs> okay, so at home that is very soft on the video it's very um contrasty okay so um i'm already getting a, a whole look and feel that is very different on the computer screen that i'm getting here in my studio and and i i understand when people upload their work to the critique gallery over at drawing tutorials online that they're like oh it doesn't look like the drawing and i totally can sympathize with that um it's really frustrating when you um you're photo of your drawing does not look like the drawing at all. So the camera isn't really picking up the subtleties here. And I'll, I'll accept that. It is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. But if you were here in my studio, it looks a whole lot more subtle. So now I'm going to come on in with this. This is an eraser pencil. So this at the tip is an eraser. And um, so if I show you right over here, okay. Yeah, it just erases out. And let's get rid of those crumbs. But I love this really cheap brush on the end. So it says, I have that problem photographing work looks uh, so grainy. Yeah, so what you need to do is you need to point two lights going that way at the photo, and it eliminates the grain. So I'm going to just come on in and scrub a little bit now over here. Scrub, scrub. And I'm just scrubbing this into the paper. 
Okay, and I'm not worried about going outside of the lines. I'm kind of tapping. So I'm tapping, and, and the other thing with the white charcoal is you have all, uh, if you go to my website, drawingtutorialsonline.com, the link is below, um, you could sign up for a free course that's about white charcoal. Um, I do not send spam emails about sales emails and all that. I, I, I won't do that to you. But you will get a three-part course on how to work with white charcoal. And I like wor working with the white charcoal on illustration board much better than this paper. Uh, with the illustration board, it's, uh, it, it, it acts quite differently than on this paper. So I'm just really scrubbing right now and trying to make things extremely soft. Just looking at some comments. Is that it? I don't know if it's a typewriter eraser. It's, fab, it's just a regular eraser, Faber-Castell Perfection 7058B. But it's uh, it's awesome. I love it. It's it's I'm just it's it's a cheap brush, and you know sometimes my students will come into class and they do a drawing with like a ballpoint pen that they got at the doctor's office, and it's like the best drawing that they ever did with like the cheapest art supply. Sometimes it's really good to work with these cheap supplies um, because they just they're fun, and that's kind of like what I'm doing right now, um, just working with this cheap brush. You know, the key to realism. Uh, you know, I'm coming at this from a painter's point of view. I don't really paint that much anymore, uh, but uh, painting for over 25 years, how do you create realism? You create realism. Uh, no, I'm not going to do the tattoo. <laughs> uh, you create realism by working in layers and creating softness. Um, okay. Uh, yep. Typewriter eraser. That's so funny. I didn't even know that. Thank you. I got it at the art supply store. So again, I'm just trying to soften this. So I'm, I'm taking the white charcoal and I'm putting it over my color ace. And it goes over the color ace quite beautifully. Now again, it's so much softer in, in, in real life than it is on the monitor. So now I'm going to soften some more areas. Let's go back to the white charcoal. And I'm going to sharpen it, get some sound effects here, look at some uh, comments. Yeah, on black paper, it's really hard. There's no subtleties with that, okay? So, um, but it, it's fun. Experiment with it and see what you can come up with. So now let's put another layer on. So now I'm doing this in, in a circular motion. And my last layer, I'm going to press down a little bit harder and just be a little bit more aggressive. Right now, I'm being a little timid with it all. So just very soft. We want the butt to turn, okay? Don't bring that all the way to the edge. So top of the sacrum right over here, the edge of where the line separates the light from the dark, okay? And uh, again, a little bit of the concept of less is best. So let's just do some modeling over here. And now this part of her back is round. So you might wanna do a round Stroke right over here, wrapping around, wrapping around. You have to be careful with horizontal strokes uh, because horizontal strokes will stop the flow of the torso in its tracks. Like you want to do like a combination of strokes, like some vertical, some horizontal, some curved around. So this is her oblique area. We're going to curve around. Make that look three-dimensional. I'm curious what angle is the paper you're working on. I always, Jack, I always work on at a 45-degree angle uh, because I feel it's easiest on my shoulder. I've kind of destroyed my body over the years working at a vertical easel for many, many years. Um, yeah. So the link to the photo reference that you can purchase from this guy who's an artist is in the show more part of the video um, right below. Okay, just click on that and it'll bring you to his website and you can buy a photo pack from him. And I think they're pretty reasonably priced. All right, so let's curve around here. Now, I could also use the fan brush to blend. So I'm going to go, see how, I'm going to go over the pencil a little bit now. There's a little light here on the bottom of the rib cage. 
a little light. I'm doing a circular pencil stroke. I, I, you know, at sacrificing of not showing my hand moving, um, I, that to me is like a little annoying. I'd rather you see my hand, but, um, I don't want to, I don't want to mess everything up. I'd rather you see the drawing a little bit bigger than, than my hand moving. How can we fix that right now? One second. Let's move that over. Cool. And I let me move my drawing over just a touch to the left. I'm going to probably screw everything up. Just bear with me. So this is on my Cintiq screen. Let me untape that. Bear with me. Let's just move her over a touch. Good. Yeah, so I feel that it's a little frustrating for me right now as your teacher that you're not seeing the subtleties that I'm seeing. So maybe the 4K camera is something that I should definitely think about investing in. So now we have her ribs over here. So there's three, there's four that are quite pronounced. So there's this one. There's this one. And there's this one. I didn't get the four. I got the three. Um, let's go a little around. So I do believe these are called um, rhomboids over here. Excuse me if I'm wrong. I would have liked to have studied up on that before I started. Okay, that's scapula right over there. And lots of light on the shoulder curve around and let's come to this side of her spine so this trapezius and uh, we should be kind of I could go vertical with these lines so let me hold the pencil this way I feel a little bit more comfortable holding it this way and uh, a little light over here very round so this is using your light touch so now we're starting to have some of these pencil strokes show through. Um, I don't see the link. Okay. Uh, that stinks. Let me just, uh, can you bear with me for one second? I got the wrong glasses on. My, I, you know, my eyes, I'm not aging gracefully here, people. Uh, I can't even see that with these. Okay. My eyes just freaked. Listen, I promise you, I... I it's going to take me, it's going to be like a disjointed uh, live stream if, if I start to stop and start to put links in when I'm filming. I promise you, I'll put the link to the photo um, after the live stream. We're already in like a half an hour, so another half an hour I'll probably do be done with this live stream. But I promise you, I'll, I'll put the uh, link in. Now, if you look at, if I look at his name, so, oh, let me look at the link for the website. One, one second here. It is... One second. I've got two computers going here. One second. Okay, I got the website. So you can, you, let me uh, write a comment here. I'm going to put it in the comments. It is still and motion pictures.com. Yeah, it's still in motionpictures.com. And what you need to do is you need to click on, uh, click around. He has wedding photography there. Uh, go to fine art and then go to model. And if you go to fine art and model, you'll see the pictures. Okay. Now, um, he has a couple for free that you can download. But I, I would, I'm a big believer in supporting artists that are doing good things for other artists. So I would encourage you maybe to buy a, a photo pack. I bought them all. And it was super reasonable. So if you just buy like a small model pack, it's going to be even more reasonable. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, you got it. I hope you got that link. Yeah, it's still in motionpictures.com. Now, let's keep going with, with this. So I'm coming on in here. I'm, I'm going to put in a couple more uh, pencil strokes, and then we're going to blend one more time. So let me just refocus. So 
So I, I like seeing pencil strokes on things. Uh, when I was younger and I used to do oil paintings for book covers, like I had this like fixation that I had to get rid of all paintbrush strokes. Like that was my thing. Like I really liked that. And I, I thought it was really cool to make the painting look super slick. And, and you don't see any of the paintbrush strokes. But as I've gotten older, my tastes have changed. And I love texture. And I love all texture of paper. It's, it's, it's so much fun. And I, I, don't, I like seeing the, the pencil strokes on a drawing like this. I, I think it adds much more uh, of a three-dimensional look and feel. So let's go back to those ribs. Now, listen, you don't want to bring that white charcoal all the way to the edge of the body because if you do, you're going to get rid of that turning plane. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to soften this out. Now, again, I've got to be extra cautious that I don't overdo the white charcoal. That would not be cool. We don't want to overdo it. Again, the philosophy here is um, we want to go with less is best. I think I'm going to go a little bit lighter over here. Okay, and a little bit lighter over here, just a touch. We want her to turn, so... She's turning into the shadow, maybe a little bit lighter over there. We'll come back to that. And one more time with uh, a little bit more lightness on the butt with a curved pencil stroke direction. Uh, curved pencil stroke direction. So now I'm going to blend it one more time. So again, today's class is just really about applying the white charcoal um, and where not to apply it, where to apply it. And uh, yeah, so now let's um, blend that again. So I want to blend with a little bit more of an aggressive brush. This is a pretty stiff brush. So remember, my philosophy is layers. So I'm curving that around her back. Curve it around. Looks pretty heavy on the video. It's really translucent in real life. Hey, Kat. Thank you. Stacy, welcome. Marie, thank you. On, shh, I can't say your last name, but it's pretty cool. Or your username. So curve around the oblique. Curve around. Blend it into the pencil a little bit, the cola erase pencil. Okay, curve around. And uh, now let's curve around one more time. So I promise you when I'm done with the drawing, I will not finish it today uh, because I've been trapped in the studio all week. So after this live stream, I have got to get, I got to get out of this house. Um, so I won't work on it this afternoon. I'm going to just head out for a little while, but I'm going to work on this this week. I want this to be a drawing that takes me hours. So when I photograph this with my regular camera, you'll see the subtleties versus the video camera that's not really picking up the subtleties. So we're just softening, softening, softening. And in turn, see I'm going right off of the model. See I'm going off there. Don't worry about staying within the lines. Um, thank you, Karen. I really do appreciate that. Vickis, thank you. Vickis Pandy. Yeah, you should check out some of my older live streams, like uh, some of the first live streams I did some shading with the face, and uh, you want to check that out. I've got tons of portrait tutorials, no doubt. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, um, now I, I could actually leave the white charcoal alone for a little while and then go back and do more with the pencil, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with the white charcoal, and, ooh, that really screwed up. I hope my sharpener's not dying here. So I've got a really nice point from my sharpener. I'll show you my sharpener for the newcomers. Now, people always ask me, how big is this drawing? Well, this drawing's tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. This is six and a half inches tall. Okay? Top of the hair, bottom of the butt. And uh, so now, uh, pencil sharpener. Um, we're going to go back in time now. So we're going to time travel to uh, the years of Panasonic. 
Does Panasonic, I don't even think that company works anymore. Can you get the white charcoal? Can you get the white shade without the white charcoal? What do you mean? Um, sure, I mean, you can use different materials, sure. You can work on different paper and, and kind of work with your eraser, absolutely. Okay, now let's, um, let's just push the white charcoal one more layer. Okay, uh, so let's go to the scapula. So there's highlights on bone. When you see bone at the surface of the skin, that's where you're going to have highlights. So we're going to put, there's a lot of bone over here with the scapula. We're going to put a highlight over there. This is the medial edge of the scapula, which is a fancy way of just saying it's close to the middle of the body. Okay. And um, let's get the neck one more time. And let's put the trapezius. So now I'm, I'm being a little deliberate with my line. So I, I don't care. I, I, I love the line. It, it works for me. I, I love the texture. I don't want everything to be too smooth. Just looking at some comments. Yeah, good, Michelle. It's a great one. Some other info on the white pencils, Conte. Yep. So this, this pencil is a real cheapo, and I love it. It's just the company named Generals, and it's a cheap white charcoal pencil, and it really... Um, works for me. It serves my purposes. It's not like the best white charcoal quality, I'm sure, but it's it's really good. So I'm wrapping around, wrap around a little lighter over here. We're getting a little muddy. I want that back to look round. Once again, trapezius, but underneath the trapezius is the sacrospinalis. Like I said earlier, it's a big column on either side of the spine. I do believe that might be a rhomboid right there. And now this is where we should be at our lightest next to the highlight on the scapula because this is closest to the light. And this should be lighter actually than the top of our butt. So I'm probably going to work on this a lot this week because I, I really need to do something that's a little bit more finished. I keep doing like teaching drawings and nothing's finished. And every once in a while, you need, just need to take a step back and spend a little bit more time on something and make it look finished. So there for you, there might be um, there might be uh, drawings that you do for practice. And that's fine, and you need to do that. But there also needs to be drawings that you do that are your finished pieces. Okay, let's come down this. We have ribs over here. We can also erase out. We don't want to go too dark with that. Okay, let's come back over here near the sacrum. I'm going to resharpen because I want a skinny little line. And we're kind of resharpening this pencil down to nothing. I don't like working with pencils when they're this short, but uh, for this application, I think it's fine. Um, the reference uh, is from, I put the link to the website in the chat. So it's stillandmotionpictures.com. Yeah, just kind of scroll up on the chat. You should be able to find it. And after the live stream, I'm going to also put it in the comments. I'm sorry, in the show more part of the video. I, I, I took the time this morning as I was scrambling uh, to get ready for the live stream, and I, I put it in there, but then I must have forgot to hit save in, in YouTube when I did that, so my bad. It's a really super duper cold day here on Eastern Long Island with the wind chill in the, feels like the wind chills in the 20s. Joyce, I recommend doing both. I know that is not a good answer, so let me kind of, um, so Joyce asked, do you recommend doing uh, more gesture drawings or long drawings? So um, gesture drawings are extremely important. Uh, 
Yes, because they enable you to uh, draw the figure from head to toe very quickly. Um, yeah, so uh, gesture drawings are, are awesome. And I, I can, I've always done long stuff, long paintings, long oil paintings that took a week to do. Um, but until I started doing the short gestures, um, that's when I started getting better. So you just need to m make it your practice that you do both. I know that's not really the best answer. It seems like a very generic answer to do both, but you have to do both and, and every week's going to vary. So maybe some weeks you might do more of the short stuff and then other weeks you might do more of the, the longer stuff, but each week you really need to do both. Okay. And I think doing the short gesture duration drawings is just as important as doing this, because if you just do this, um, you could really get locked into one thing, which is just this, and that's no good, okay? So I think um, we're going to brush some of this off once again. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use this brush, and tap. Kind of sounds like Bob Ross with a happy tree. Okay, so now I'm, I'm digging the way that it's looking here in my studio on the video monitor. This is way too light. Okay, so now what we can do is, is stop with the white charcoal for a moment. And let's just work a little bit with our color race. So for those of you who are newcomers, I'm using a Prismacolor color race. Um, so gesture for me, the classic gesture is two minutes. All right. I don't really, I don't have any of my gesture drawings around me that I, I'd be willing to share with you. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, anatomy is just um, absolutely something that you got to study. You can study it from books. I've got an entire anatomy uh, course on my website that hits every single muscle, every single bone that's pertinent to the artist. I don't get into the deep layers because it's not as important. Um, but yeah, the basics. So now we can come on back on in and uh, start to sharpen some things up. So let me get the right side of this pencil. So we can come on in over here now and just start to redraw with our pencil our color race and put in some more tone. We can go over the white charcoal with this pencil as well. So let's get the indent of that spine, go over it a few times. We're gonna do our circular pencil stroke right over here to get that, what I like to call the line that separates dark half tone. And um, so we have a little reflected light next to her spine right over there. Um, so this comes down. So just putting more pencil down. We have a little kind of indent right there above the sacrum near the lumbar spine. Just coming on in. And uh, just let's reinforce some things that we've already put down because we're starting to take some of that pencil off of the page with the brush. So you might want to go back in and just re-finesse. Do you recommend using varnish or fixative? No, I never use fixative or varnish. And just because if you use fixative or varnish every once in a while, great. But being a professional artist and doing this for since 1990, so it's uh, many, many years, over 30 years, uh, if you use fixative once or twice, it's fine. If you use it for 30 years, Fixative is like super toxic. And so um, my philosophy with oil painting and pencil is I, I, I just want to use the least amount of materials and I don't want to add stuff to my process. I want to subtract stuff from my process. So I'm never, this doesn't really need uh, fixative because it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay in my studio. And if I was going to sell this drawing, it would be behind glass. I'd frame it and it would be behind glass. So it would never smudge. So the only enemy to this drawing really would be sunlight. 
And uh, so when you hang it in your home, you just do not hang it in direct sunlight. So you hang it maybe in a hallway that's dark. So if you go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and, and you go to the Degas room, um, all of the Degas charcoal uh, pieces, uh, pastel pieces, are in a super dark room with no sunlight whatsoever. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just So there's no real need for the fixative unless it's going to be handled a lot. And once this drawing is done, it's probably just going to get lost somewhere in my files, and um, no one's ever going <laughs> to see it again with the thousands of other drawings that I have. Um Cool. Uh, gotta run, but thanks so much for your lesson. As always, you got it, Karen. It's not. This is not one of the most exciting lessons in the world. I'll, I'll fully admit that. Um, but sometimes, I hey uh, Benedict, I just got to um, do a, a longer one, and the longer ones are a little slow. Uh, fully admit that. Uh, not the most exciting to watch, but it's a nice uh, layered approach. Okay, we're going to just turn, and some people, you know, I'm just trying to mix it up for people on the live streams, because uh, um, starting, sometimes I'm always in a rush to try to get something down on the paper that looks halfway decent. Uh, with this, uh, I don't have to rush so much, so it's just, you're kind of chilling out with me in my studio, and, and you're watching part of the process of a long drawing. And I, I hey, Mag Magdalena, okay, I understand, thanks for the answer. Yeah, so um, less is best with the chemicals. So with chemicals, uh, when I would oil paint, I would only really use refined linseed oil, and I'd only use terps for the underpainting. So if I was doing, say, four paintings a month, I would only be exposed to turpentine for those four times a month, and it wouldn't even be all day. And I would never use terps to clean my brushes. I would use, like, baby oil and ivory soap, and it does a really good job cleaning your brushes. So you're limiting your uh, toxic exposure uh, to all those chemicals. Again, if you're like a weekend warrior and you just do um, painting like once or twice uh, a week and maybe uh, five times a month, no big deal. But if you're doing this every single day, it's going to uh, become cumulative and it's going to really affect your health. Thank you so much, Tommy from the Philippines. Okay, so now um, I'm going to just be a, a monster and press down a little bit harder with some of this line. Uh, some people don't like when I do this, but I, 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 I'm a line freak, so a line for me is just so much fun. Just kind of go over it a little, curve it, and um, just makes it pop a little bit more. Just go over this, make it pop a little bit more curve around and it probably doesn't look like much of a difference on the video monitor so let's um just yep a little darker and let's do a convex line that roll i want to go darker over here with this line in the shadow so you have to just make the decision do you even like to do this style of drawing because this style of drawing is really slow it's very tedious and uh, some people don't like this. Some people like what I did last week instead, where, okay, an hour in and out, and you're done. Just very quick, very powerful, uh, very quick, very scribbly. Um, so, yeah, this is um, different. This is long-term. I appreciate that. Um, speaking of charcoal, what situations would you use charcoal paper, or, or would you? Um, I do have the Strathmore, how many layers would I have in a, in a typical piece? Uh, I'm going to, this is not even close to being finished. I would work on this a lot more. Uh, so I'm probably going to devote like another two hours minimum. Probably if I work on the head and the face, then we're at another hour. Uh, the feet, that would be another hour. So I could push this for another four hours. Um, Absolutely. And, and again, you're not seeing the subtleties on the, on the monitor. This just looks all pure white on the monitor. That's how the video camera is picking it up. But in my studio, it's not nearly close to being pure white. Um, speaking of charcoal, what situations would you use white charcoal? Would you use charcoal paper? So 
Um, I wouldn't. I, I've, I've used the Strathmore tinted uh, paper. And um, for me, working this small Frankie, it, the texture is too intense for me. So this is six and a half inches tall. So uh, I'm never going to use the white charcoal pencil, especially you're trying to get that like little eye there and you're going over the tooth of the paper, the texture of the paper. It's just, it's too much. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't use that. I would use, if I was going to use the charcoal paper, it would be for a huge charcoal drawing, like big 20 by 30, which I would never do. Um, and that would grab the charcoal with those crevices. But if you're working small like this on a head that's an inch and a half tall or an inch and a quarter tall, I would never use it. Instead, I would use the charcoal, uh, the illustration board um, that you see on some of the paintings hanging or the drawings hanging on the wall behind me. I have um, used the painted illustration board. I like that better. Hope that answered your question. Jethro, love that name, Jethro. Where did I learn? I went to the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan, New York. That's where I teach right now. It's a great college. Uh, that was many years ago, so I'm super old. Um, yeah, will you do the hand on the chin? No, absolutely not. Uh, it's It looks good in the photo, but I think for a drawing, so that hand, um, for me, it's just going to be, it's going to, yeah, it's not going to work. So we're dealing with from the... Uh, chin to the shoulder three eighths of an inch and then each finger is going to be like a sixteenth of an inch so yeah i don't want to go there so sometimes uh, i have this uh, course on my website and it's called process and one of the lessons in the process course is about editing your photos and that's a really really important lesson uh, especially if you're an illustrator and you're taking pictures of models uh, what to leave in what to leave out and in this particular case I wouldn't want to put that hand in uh, for this drawing. It, it's just too small. If I was going to work bigger, I'd put it in. But this tiny little drawing, no, absolutely not. Uh, I'll never get that grace of those foreshortened fingers in, in this. Um, yeah, the Mooka book is awesome. Love the process. Thank you, uh, Michael. Hi, how do you know when it's done? Uh, so you know when it's done. There's two different ways. There's actually three different ways. This is a great question. How do you know when you're complete with an art piece of artwork? Well, um, when it looks done, reason number one, it looks done, and then you go on in and you try to make it perfect, and you screw it up, and you're like, oh, God, I just screwed it up. You know you need to stop. The second reason um, or the second uh, way to know whether you're done or not is to, is it a portfolio piece? Does it sync up with your other portfolio pieces? Okay, so if it's for a portfolio piece and you want your portfolio to look the same, uh, your style to be the same, uh, you look at the rest of your portfolio and does it look like that? If it doesn't look like that, well, then you need to work on it a little bit more or a little less, okay? So if all of your portfolio pieces were completed in four hours and now all of a sudden you work on this one and it's eight hours, then you've overworked it, okay? And it's gonna look different. And then the last reason is your gut. And the more uh, experience you have, you just know when it's done and to leave it, okay? So those are three reasons to kind of understand that you're done. Um, it's it's uh, Experience is, is really gonna help you to figure that out. Now, what we can do here is we can also pop some reflected lights. Now, I'm gonna do it and then I'm gonna get rid of them. Like over here, this is where people would use the white charcoal. I would never use the white charcoal over here. Instead, I would use the kneaded eraser or, or I would come on in with the little mono zero eraser and use this instead. Like there's a lot of reflected light over here on this fold of skin. I don't wanna put that reflected light there. I don't think, yeah, that's not going to work for me, so I'm not going to put that in. But let's say I wanted to put like a little reflected light over here on her hip, but I could come on in with this and draw with the eraser, okay? Now, I'm not going to use my white charcoal in the shadow because this area... So in, in painting, being a painter for many, many years, being a professional illustrator for 18 years, I did many oil paintings, hundreds of them for book covers, and... What I learned is that if you do not have opacity with translucency, 
the painting's going to look plasticky. It's going to look fake. So every painting that you do should have translucency. Um, now, clear transparency is you look through glass. Translucency is you can see through like a linen fabric or um, it you can partially see through it like frosted glass is translucent. So this is going to be my translucent part of the body. And all bodies have translucency, like your ear is very translucent if light goes through your ear. So if I start taking the opaque white charcoal and put it over here, so my eye sees, oh, there's a little light over here. And I put white charcoal, I'm going to destroy the drawing. There's going to be no shadow and light. There's going to be no translucency. So you have to know like how to use the toned paper. Like the toned paper, use it to your advantage. And I'm going to use it to my advantage. I'm going to use it for my reflections, um, my translucency. So this is reflected light. Maybe the photographer um, put a reflector over here and light is coming down, hitting the reflector board and bouncing back into her body. So I don't want to put the white charcoal on the left side at all. You know, there's a lot of great artists and they do beautiful artwork and they're all over Instagram. There's so many talented people out there. And there's a, a, another school, an online school, um, and the instructor puts the charcoal in the um, shadow, the white charcoal in the shadow. I, I just don't believe in that. Uh, for me, I think it just kills the dimensionality. But don't get me wrong, that other artist, that other teacher, their drawings are beautiful. Um, so it's, it's really up to the individual how you're going to deal with the shadow lights, the reflected lights in the shadow. Okay, so let me look at some of these. Um, how many drawings should be in a portfolio? Well, a professional portfolio, I think if you, let, let's just take illustration for an, an example. For a professional illustrator's portfolio, you got to start somewhere, right? So I would start to advertise the portfolio at 10. 10 is like the bare minimum. Uh, it really should be 15 to 20. However, you've got to start somewhere, right? So 10 is a good place to start. You can really start with eight too. Um, you just don't want to throw everything in your portfolio. Uh, what do you think about using charcoal powder applied with a brush? You could do that, absolutely. I wouldn't do that just because I've got thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment, computer stuff all over. I just don't want to have too much dust flying around getting into the mechanics of all these cameras and things. Um, when you draw figures, do you put the measuring at the first place or take it? When you draw figures, do you put the measuring at the first place or take it as the main thing? I'm not quite sure of your question, but what I can tell you is this. Um, so I started this drawing over here that's called an angle, and then this angle. So my first measurement was what's right below her shoulder. That's my first measurement with the negative space. My second measurement is the distance from here to the center of her butt versus from here to the edge of her hip. Thank you, I appreciate that. You got it, Richard. I really do appreciate you watching discord yeah my son has a discord he's like dad dad let me make you a discord let me make you a discord and i'm like i have too much to manage right now with my website teaching college it's just another thing like a discord server would be another thing uh how would i use a discord server in this situation um mitsuki how would i use that tell me please RD Cloud, we've got that. So RD Cloud writes, please subscribe to my RD Cloud. I am an artist too. I make tutorials for beginners. Okay, so we've got that. You typed it in like six times, so don't type it in again. We've got it. Um, Michael, I find the lights and the shadows are always darker and they appear. So if you make this reflected light as light as that, you've just destroyed the form of your drawing. Now, understand that this is just a study of the figure. What would make this really three-dimensional is if I put a background tone in. I'm not going to do that here, um, but that's what would make this really, really... Um, I didn't start it with the torso peanut shape Aurora, although this is the torso peanut shape. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, let me, let me just grab this piece of paper on the floor. One second. <coughs> All right, RD Cloud, listen, you've posted that like several times. I don't want to block you from the chat, so please stop. Uh, you got it. Thank you so much. So listen, RD Cloud, I'm telling everybody right now to subscribe 
to your Artie Cloud uh, here on YouTube and you have tutorials for beginners, maybe you guys can go over there and, and support Artie Cloud. That would be really, really nice. Um, let me get a scrap piece of paper. One second, I'm going to get it off the screen here. Okay, so this is just the worst page ever of, ge <laughs> of gestures. That was a really bad day. Okay, so I'm going to fold that over. So this pose here, my camera's going to freak out because it has nothing to focus on. Hold on. Okay, so this pose is no doubt. Let me get a piece of tape. Put that over there. And she is no doubt, because, uh, yeah, she's the torso peanut shape. So this is side of her rib cage. Let's, let's, let's slow down a little bit. I'm scribbling. I need to slow down. That's her body, the torso. And so we're going to come on in over here. Okay, let's come on in. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get that center. Let's um, throw that foreshortened leg out. Let's come over here. This is her sacrum. Uh, this is her 12th floating rib right over there. Uh, this is her spine. And uh, this is her scapula. So it's all within uh, the torso peanut shape. This scapula is going a little bit more straight up and down because her arm is going straight up and down. So these, this is seven cervical vertebrae right over here. This is her thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, sacrum, center line. And uh, so now we can get this foreshortened leg, which is nothing more than a cylinder. This would be her obliques. We have that rib cage right over here, uh, deltoid. And uh, now this, I kind of screwed up on a little bit. But yeah, that's our torso peanut shape. And so if I'm just doing this very quickly, that's how it would look, okay? So the torso peanut shape, is this on camera? No, uh, the torso peanut shape is two ovals. Just like that, okay? So getting back to this sucker, so where are we? So I think we're just about done with this live stream. Um, it's just, I'm gonna be working on this now for hours. Uh, YouTube is better for you than uh, this course, okay. Thank you, Sora, bye. So, okay, gotcha, gotcha, Lily Chen. Hang on, you haven't commented on Truff snoring yet today. So Truffs isn't here. God, Truffs is just really falling down on the job. All right, so let me see if I just uh, tilt this a little bit. No, that doesn't do anything for it. Let's tilt it this way. That doesn't do anything for it either. I hope that you, you learned something from today's live stream. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to be working on this all uh, week on and off. Where does this reference come from? You can um, check it out in the chat. And right after this video, I'm going to put it in the show more part. Um, okay, Mitsuki, please do. It would be easy. You just have to post and link your videos there. Um, let your son manage it. He already volunteered, but he's just a little, uh, he's a little shit. <laughs> uh, it would it's just really a good way you, to interact with your audience. Okay, got you. I'll think about it, Mitsuki. Uh, thank you. See you on Tuesday. So uh, for those of you interested, I do. Yeah, she's missing classes. She's getting absences, trust. I have a Zoom class with a live model every Tuesday for members of DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. If you want to learn more about what I have to offer, um, just check out the show more part of the uh you know, modern day James. Okay, to get an idea of what it could be like for you. Yeah, I just, I'll check it out. It, it's, it's just, I have so much to manage in my life. I'm trying not to um, add more stuff to manage. Okay. I will. I feel so bad Truffs isn't here. She's part of the, uh, you got it, Phoenix. She's part of the club. She's falling down on the job. I don't know what to do about that. Like, I called her in, but yeah, she's not here. Thank you, Marie. Uh, say hello to the cats. I see them in the in the little picture there. Awesome. I see one is, uh, you have two different colors there. Nice. Rob, I, I appreciate that, Rob. So get out there and do some drawing. 
Helen, I really do appreciate you joining on the live stream. You were the first comment. Cat in Phoenix, it's probably really beautiful there. Uh, Cat, I hope I see you on Tuesday in the Zoom class. Uh, yeah, we, we need a trough drawing challenge. Uh, Basilo Crespo Garcia Barquero. I hope I said that right. Um, Sandy, she missed two weeks in a row. I mean, I can go run and get her, but that would be really unprofessional to leave the screen. Um, thank you so much, Martina, Michelle Lacanto. Thank you. See you on Tuesday. We're going to do a long drawing on the Zoom class on Tuesday. We're going to do some gestures, but we're going to do some uh, long ones. Michelle, thank you. Joyce, thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mitsuki. Maya, thank you, Phoenix. Awesome. Mar Marie, they keep me saying, yeah. Uzbek Art. Thank you. Giorgio from Italy. John Fem Femiani. Cat, yes. KW. Shelby. All right, Shelby. I look for thank you for joining, Shelby. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for not getting sick of me just yet. Aurora, thank you. I appreciate that. Magdalena, my favorite Russian name. Is it Russian? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so the student that I had named Magdalena back in the day, my Saturday drawing class, was from Russia. But if I'm wrong, excuse me. Neil, I appreciate that. David, thank you so much for joining. Ellie, Kat, or okay. Tommy and Moises, see you on Tuesday. All right, everyone. So I'll probably post this to my Instagram. Um, you got it. I'll post this drawing to my Instagram maybe midweek. The link to my Instagram is in the show more part. I'll post the website in the show more part right after the video, I promise you. Harrisburg, PA, Veronica, love it. All right, guys, have a great day. I'm just not done yet with the butt thing. Not done yet. Yeah, you can see this video again. Can't get there, but I've watched everyone. All right, cool. Polish. Love it, Magdalena. I will not forget that. Polish. So um, I'm all Italian, but my last name's French Canadian. So something happened somewhere there. Magdalena, Polish. See you, Aura. Thank you, Aura. All right. See you guys.